So one thing that I have been wanting to do in here for a long time is doing an over mantle on this portable renter friendly fireplace that I did a couple years ago now, I think it is. I think now might be the time to just go ahead and build it in. It's been nice, but I want to do an over mantle. I think I want it to just stay here because let's be honest, if for some reason we move on to another home, I'm not gonna take this with me because I'm gonna need more projects to do <laughs> so this will get built in here also my nightstands are looking a little shabby they were a project that I did early in my YouTubing so they're about four to five years old they are mirrored and like most mirrored nightstands they've started to crack and they were Ikea um, dressers that I inherited when we purchased this place and so they're just ready <laughs> they're ready to move on and I think I'm gonna go see if I can't find something either on consent assignment or at a thrift store and maybe do a little makeover. So we're going to be doing some things like that to spruce up this room, but let's get started right with the big piece and that is the fireplace over mantle. So we're going to go outside, build the over mantle and let's get going. Okay, so we are going to start our fireplace over mantle build. If you haven't seen the original fireplace build episode, I will make sure to link that below so you can go and watch that afterwards. Also, this would work if you had an existing electric fireplace that was that you purchased and you wanted to build an over mantle and just make sure that they're all painted out to the same finish and it would still, I think, work for that situation as well so whether you're building your own fireplace or just working with what you've originally got this over mantle idea should work so let's get started so I had some two by four lumber in my scrap pile already I'm really chipping away at the scraps I'm really getting down to the end and I think I'll have enough for this and so I'm really excited okay so we're gonna do the base and top plates is what I'm gonna call them like the top one and bottom one and that measurement should be be 48 inches exactly. Okay, and to make sure this is all even, we'll use this as a pattern. And we don't need to because they are exact. So that's perfect. Okay, then we need to measure the thickness of this because we need to get rid of that in our calculations. And that's one and a half inches. So we're gonna have two of those. So three inches, we need to take off of the 47 and a half of the height. And so that's 44 and a half. So we need to cut three of those. Okay, so I am gonna be using a framing nailer simply because I have it. If you do not have a framing nailer, just use a drill and some really long wood screws and screw it into place. This will make quick work of it. It's very strong. This seems intimidating to a lot of people, but to me, I love it. <laughs> and I feel so powerful when I use it and, and it works well and quickly. Just make sure you're wearing safety glasses. Make sure you're very careful as I always try to be. So we're gonna nail in both side pieces and then the middle piece and then we'll put on the top plate. So it's like base one two three and then top plate very simple framing super easy we got this so the first thing I want to do is find center which would be right there because then we'll know that when we hang a mirror or something piece of art or whatever in the middle there will be something to screw it into first we are going to line this up make sure it's nice and square hold it nice and flat Nice. Put that in the center. All right. Okay, so this is our frame. I ended up putting at least two nails in each point so it would be nice and sturdy. So I've got this sheet left over from my son's um, bedroom makeover and it's not quite a full sheet. A full sheet would have actually been perfect for what we're doing. So what I'm gonna have to do is cut this in half and then like still like a little section um, from the extra and piece it together and hope that it looks good. I think it'll be fine, but we're gonna try to make this work.
Okay, this is turning out almost perfect. Like, it's spaced evenly from top and bottom. And so we've just got this one seam here towards the bottom. Once we caulk it, you won't even notice it. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to put on the side panels, which is three and three quarters inch. And we'll do that on either side and then we'll trim it out on the front side. And that'll be pretty much it other than the painting portion. So we're, it, this is working out really great. Okay, so you can see that there is like an exposed edge right here, but that is not gonna be a problem now because we are gonna take some trim and cover that up. And on the side, it will be nice and seamless, especially once we caulk it. So this is gonna be how we finish it off. Okay, so let's talk. So I made a boo-boo. <laughs> Off camera, I did a dry fit of that over mantle that we just built. And it's just a wee bit too tall to slide it on and just leave it in place. So while I mull over how to do this the proper way, I wanted to quickly tell you about the mattress firm who I wanna thank for sponsoring this episode. So my husband and I have been sleeping on a mattress that's about 10 years old. It's not the oldest I've ever slept on. It was getting difficult for my husband who has had back surgery and he really needs something that's firm and gonna give him a lot of support for myself. I honestly don't really care all that much. I just enjoy sleeping next to my husband. We were in need of getting a mattress that was a firm mattress. Now you're seeing all over a lot of these ship in a box kind of options, which they do have, but some of us need a more traditional mattress and that's what I set out to do. So I went into my store, but by the way, you can shop online. It's easy to shop their website as well. But I went in and I spoke with one of their sleep experts, Jonathan, who is super, super helpful. Their sleep experts have received over 200 plus hours training on how to help people select good mattresses that will work for them. They have every major brand that you could possibly think of. If you're looking for it, they probably probably have it there. So I tried out some of the mattresses. I selected one that I thought would work really good for my husband. It was a beauty rest pressure point one, I believe. I will link the exact mattress that we purchased in the description box below. So if you're curious, in addition, they have pillows <laughs> and these pillows are, have been really great. This one is a charcoal one that they had in their store and I'll link this below as well. And it has cooling technology, which is really nice because it's so hot and humid this time of year, especially here in Florida and it feels so amazing. So we are getting really, really good sleep here lately. A couple other things I wanted to tell you is you have 120 days to try out their mattress. And if it's not working out for you, it's not a good fit, you can swap it out. They have delicious delivery, they have shipping. It's so easy and completely hassle-free. Also, they have a 120 day guarantee that if you find a better price somewhere else that they will refund you the difference. And right now they are running a 4th of July sale that has sales up to 60% off. In addition, I've got a coupon code, which I'll link below, but it is MFRM. 
10 will get you an additional 10% off. I promise you on this channel, I will help you save money on home decor. I will help you save money on elevating the look of your home. So take all of those savings, invest it into a good night's sleep. It's so worth it. Go get a good mattress, check out the mattress from Cell, and I know that you are not gonna be sorry. So I'm gonna take a rest while I try to work out in my mind how to fix this little issue that we've got. Okay, so here's what we've got going on. So I first made sure of where I wanted the fireplace to be, and then I took a pencil and marked on either side of it so I knew where to cut. Then I took my oscillating tool and started cutting down that line, and then Dolly darted in. I made the mistake of leaving the door open. She darted in to protect me. I quickly <laughs> turned it off, got her out, shut the door, and then finished cutting out these cuts right here. And then I scored along the line with my utility knife and then I just took a putty knife and a hammer and pried it back it came back super easily and then we had our section out and I put it back in just to make sure it fits and it does so then once we did that I taped off where the outline of the fireplace will be because we are going to take out this section of carpet <laughs> I'm a little nervous about that, <laughs> but we have no intention of keeping this carpet for very much longer. Um, the sooner the better. Replacing all the flooring upstairs where our beds and my craft room and all of that is kind of an undertaking. So we're not ready to do it right now, but I don't want to have to worry about this down the road. So what my plan is, is we're gonna just cut out a section, leave a little bit of a lip, and then I'll just take a utility stapler and staple it down into place temporarily. Hopefully that will work just underneath. My goal is to drop down our fireplace by a quarter of an inch, which is how much too tall my over mantle is. <laughs> So I'm hoping some of these little tweaks will get us that little bit. And if not, then I get some more brainstorming to do. So I'm just going to start doing this. Okay, so here's where we're at with this. So what I ended up doing is I cut back the pad so it's gonna sit barely right underneath the pressure of the fireplace. I made sure that the tack strip is cut back past this point so that it doesn't um, inhibit our ability to push it down. But we've got a little issue here, you know, we don't want this loose because we're not replacing the carpet immediately. So what I've got here is we are going to use this carpet tape that I used for my rugs. We're gonna run it along the perimeter of this. And then I'm also gonna shoot in a couple of nails to tack it into place. Those will easily rip through once we yank on it. But in the meantime, it should hold it down in place enough for it to withstand like vacuuming around it and all of that. So I think we're gonna be okay for the temporary solution.
Okay, so you can see that I'm putting these metal straps on either side, and then I'm also going to, um, from the underside, screw up into this with some, some longer screws. And so hopefully it will be secure when we push it back. Okay, so I have a little issue up here it's kind of leaning on the corner. So I don't know if this is warped or what. You, if you stepped back, you wouldn't, I'm gonna trip on something here. Uh, if you step back, you don't really notice, but it will bother me because especially since we decided to build this in. So here's what my plan is to rectify the kind of warped little corner here. I think the wall is level. I don't know if it's just the way it's sitting or maybe this is warped or it's just not sitting flush on this one corner. And had I been intentionally planning to do this the whole time to build it in, my, my original intention for this was to make this completely removable, which I think you still could do. I mean, like as of right now, it looks really good and I could disassemble it and take it with me to the next place other than the patch of carpet we removed. <laughs> but like if I had put this on a hard surface, this is totally removable. So if you're a renter, maybe this will give you a good idea however we're planning on leaving this it's staying and so the only way I see to do this properly is going to require me to deconstruct a little bit <laughs> and I really I thought about this overnight I'm going to have to remove some of these pieces of trims this paneling and then I'll reinstall it and reapply it but the only way to do this securely is to remove some of that paneling take this upper portion of the frame take my framing nailer shoot some nails into the the studs in the ceiling and get it really nice and secure because this is not going anywhere anymore <laughs> and for those of you who are concerned about accessing the outlet behind here we can still access that by pulling out the fireplace at any given time so i'm not really worried about that so we've got to do what we've got to do so unfortunately we're going to just disassemble it i don't think it's going to take me that long i don't think i have to completely deconstruct it just certain sections so that i can get this secure to the wall and it really is the best way to do it. So here we go. <laughs> caulked and puttied we're letting it dry and then it will be time to paint which honestly is not that different than this color here so <laughs> should be pretty easy so next since we were already working with primed pieces for the over mantle we just painted the upper portion to match we made sure everything was caulked and puttied really really nice and really polishes it off and then i used a good quality paint benjamin moore in the same paint color as my trim but we are going to move on to the nightstands i found these amazing nightstands at a place called rhino decor it's a consignment shop in winter garden well i will tell you that these pieces that i got uh, the nightstands and the dresser they are from Lexington furniture a nightstand there is between fifteen hundred and twenty five hundred dollars a piece I paid about 165 for each nightstand which was an incredible deal they were in fantastic shape really didn't need anything done to them except for they needed to match my bedroom and then the dresser I was able to snag that on sale for $350 just to give you an idea a Lexington dresser right now would range between like $3,500 and $4,000 so incredible savings and they were in perfect condition really there was nothing wrong with them I just made a match my bedroom and on the nightstands what I did is I took them outside and I used a sprayer to prime and paint them and they were looking so nice that I decided to go back and get the matching dresser. It's matching dresser, it's part of a set, but it does look a little bit different and it has a different style to it. I ended up going ahead and painting it here in the room, 
primed it, painted it. And I will tell you, if you use the sprayer, you are going to get a much prettier finish. But the cabinet and enamel that I picked up from Benjamin Moore, it levels out, it looks really beautiful. But if you are looking super close, the finish on the nightstands, it's just nicer with a sprayer. Go the sprayer route if you have to. If not, paint it in place like I did. This is me keeping it real. <laughs> this is real life DIY. I've got a basket over here, pillows over here, but we're about to make the bed. And I just wanted to remind you to make sure you put on really nice mattress covers to protect your mattress. That's what we're gonna do now. Okay, before I show you the finished look of the room, I just want to take a quick look back at how far we've come. And the whole point of this is to show you that you don't have to do it all at once. When we bought this home five years ago, it was so vanilla, so boring. There was no personality going on and it was just not for me. I inherited all the furniture. I tried to make it work and piece by piece, we switched things out. The first thing I did was kind of start out by adding some color. I painted the door and then we added the feet your wall in another episode. So we've been working on this room for a while. And then we did a sliding mirrored like French door, barn door. It's a little fancier than a barn door, but it's got like that grid effect. So it's like an industrial barn door. And that was a fun addition. Then of course we made our renter friendly fireplace. Now this one was one that was movable and it it's really good, but it was just phase one. And I knew it was going to be phase one. And now we are to where we are and so here is what we're looking like today and let's start with a fireplace because this over mantle it has been a project that i have been wanting to do forever i knew that i wanted to do kind of like a miniature version of what i had downstairs and now this is fully built in it's got the over mantle but you could do a version of this that's still renter friendly you just don't attach it to the wall or you could do it kind of in a way that's temporary that you could take it with you i know that this is never going to go anywhere because of the nature of what I do. Even if we were to move into a bigger home or a different home, this will stay here because I'm going to always have an infinite amount of projects going on. And so I just decided to build it in, make it super nice. It really really elevates the look of this room. And the thing that I really want to remind you is that when you take your time, you can find these incredible deals. Go find the piece that will work for you and save a ton of money. If you're in a hurry, you're gonna end up paying more. And I've taken five years to get my bedroom to this point. <laughs> and so that's what I'm saying is you don't have to do it all once, do it layer by layer, little at a time, and it's amazing. I am so thrilled with how it's looking now the bedding, it's lots of creams and beiges and taupes. It's light and airy. I've got ancient marble on the wall as the color of the paint, which is like a really soft green, which I think works, especially with the artwork and everything. And I think green can actually act as a neutral. And I'm just thrilled. I love it. I'm getting too chatty, but I just really want to instill in you that you don't have to do it all at once. And in fact, you get something that you are even more happy with when you take your time. Okay, I just want to thank once again, the Mattress Firm for sponsoring this episode. Don't forget to shop their 4th of July sale. The coupon code is in the description box, but I believe it's MFRM10. <laughs> and if you use that coupon code while shopping online, you will get an additional 10 
10% off your mattress purchase. It was such a great experience. Take all of the savings that I'm showing you what to do on and getting really high end designed to the nines look on a budget. Take those savings, invest in a good night's sleep. It's totally worth it. It's one area where I will invest always. I will always invest in getting a good night's sleep. <laughs> I just need my sleep. <laughs> Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this episode. And if so, here's another one that I think you'll love as well. And to all of my DIY goddesses out there, you really are more powerful than you know. We'll see you next time. Bye.